in other news, I, at my um, dispensary's location, the membership point club or whatever, I have 914 points. Ooh, 914 points. What does that get you? All right, so here we're going to break this down a little bit. So this is why my dispensary is better than your dispensary, everyone. Top (laughs) five reasons. Yeah. So a while back, I got a text, probably like my second or third visit, and they said, you have this many points. And I was thinking, what? What are you talking about points? So I signed in, and they were keeping track of, like, my purchases uh, for their point system that they started, I think, shortly after I started going. Okay. I'm going to move this mic just a little bit closer, because I'm, I'm sitting down in a really weird chair where I'm kind of, like, sinking into it. Um, sinking slowly further and further from the mic. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's very weird. Um, and so I looked at their point tiers and they have like a 250 point tier, 500, 750, 1000, 2500, um, 5000, and then 7500, and then 10,000, and then, ooh, 20,000. For the ballers. Oh, yeah. So, um... With the points, you can get various things, and they're actually, like, it's a pretty good deal. Like, even in the 250-point club, you could get, like, a free rolling tray. You could get a free battery for your pen. You could get a free um, pack of, like, edibles, which is, like, 16 20 bucks. Um, That's a solid little freebie, then. Oh, yeah. And then, like, the 500-point tier, you can get, like, a free V-Fire battery, which is a battery for a, a very expensive vape. Yeah. Um, you can get a free pre-roll joint, which is usually twenty bucks. You get a free, or you get a free water bottle. Seven fifty, you can get a free shirt, a beanie, free tumbler. Um, the thousand point tier, which I am almost at, which I've been saving for, is you can either get twenty five dollars off your order, which is um, basically like a free gram of whatever you want, or free edible thing, or the giant thing of honey I got. Ooh, uh, yeah. Um, or you could get a free hoodie, which I was kind of really wanting, or like a free gram, but it gets better because I was just looking at it while we were um, uh, getting ready. Is you can get on the next point tier, the 2500, you can start getting free ounces of weed. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah or like free um, con- concentrate, mm-hmm. which is what you would cook with. Uh, 5,000 point tier, you can get two grams of concentrate free. 7,500 points, you can get $150 off your order, which is basically like a whole order of weed. Whole fat stack of stuff. uh, Oh, yeah. Five grams of concentrate, a half ounce of flour, which is buds for people who don't know. Um, I'm just going to finish out the tiers. There's two left. Oh, God. Okay. Um, uh, or if you get 10,000 points, you get a free Puffo, Puffco Peak? I don't know what that is. Um, it looks pretty legit if it's like 10,000 points. I guess I'd have to like research it. Um, or you could get a free case of edible gummies. A whole a case. case. <laughs> like you get, you know, like the, the cases at like Family Video? Yep, yep. It, it's like that big. Oh, um, man. Yeah. Or you get a free ounce of flour. 20,000 points gets you two and a half ounces of flour. Man, they're really hooking you up on the high end if you're a regular. Oh, yeah. The deals are so good. And that's what I, like, really appreciate about it. Um, uh, Granted, again, it takes time. I don't know how they do points if it's, like, every dollar you spend you get a point or something, which would make sense. I would guess it's something simple like that. Um, but yeah, if you frequent often, um, then you can like, you can score some good, (laughs) some good stuff, but I really wanted that, uh, I really wanted the hoodie because I really want to, um, one, represent a place that's helped me out a lot, and two, um, like finally, like fully embrace and like come out as a recreational 
marijuana user, you know, as like a like defend, you know, like an advocate for it, I guess, or something, mm -hmm. something like that. Like really just kind of be like, all right, so I partake, you, you should try it out. Here's why, you know, kind of thing. Just uh, another way to normalize it a bit. Yeah. And, um, that's why I wanted that hoodie and I am so close. I could, after my next visit, I could get it. So I could get it by the end of, uh, end of the summer, basically. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, but I, that, so that thing of honey, I wasn't planning on getting it, but I was, uh, the last time I was able to actually walk into the dispensary. Would have been, what, February? Yeah, something like, yeah, it had to have been, wow, yeah, it had to have been February. And I was just chatting with the bud tender, and I saw that the they bud had tender. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's what they go by is bud tender, isn't it? Like so clever. It is. It's so I clever, and that. and I was chatting with her because they all. I have never had a bad experience with a bud tender, and I've had a different one every time I've went. Um, but this one I went to, she is she's a medicinal user, mm -hmm. and so she, you know knows a lot about like the stuff that recreational users don't have access to and i saw that there was the thing of honey and peanut butter and i just thought holy holy moly it's like can i get that is that like can i get is that good this... for recreational or yeah, yeah yeah is that can i do it and she's like ah oh, it's medicinal only and i'm like damn it but she was telling me about it and it, how good it was and i was like oh damn and then I was looking online because we were gonna, we wanted to go early today because last time we went, we waited in the car for an hour. And, and I bet they're super uh, busy this weekend. Oh my God. Yeah. With Labor Day. That's why I wanted, to, I was like, wrong, wrong holiday. For those of you watching, um, we're recording this uh, early Memorial Day weekend. Yes. And, I forgot to tell Joshua that I was planning to do this this morning, so I was like, oh my god, we might be recording later than I thought we were. Oh, that's alright. Uh, like apologies. I said, if it ended up being later, I was just gonna do yard work. Do yard work. Um, but yeah, no, we we went, because we went to the ATM, because cash only. Mm -hmm. I'll finish the honey bit first real quick. I ordered online, and I saw that the honey was under recreational use, and I had to do a whole double take, because I just was... Like, I, for real? Like, this is... Is it going to let me this do is, this? Like, yeah, because this is, like, the thing I wanted the honey the most was because then it's, like, another... It's an easier medium to get people to try. Because it's, like, oh, if it's honey, it's honey. It's not, like, it's not, like, the the devil's lettuce, you know? It's not the, it's not the stuff we have to smoke. Because if we smoke it, it's bad. But, you know, if I could rub it on my body or it's, Slap you know, it on a something that... Slap toast. Of toast, it's it's okay. You know, that's just how people. That's how people work. Well, and it makes and it a so, lot more accessible in the fact that you don't have to sit there and and smoke it. Yeah, that too. And I was like, okay, I'm getting it. And I thought it was going to be a little tub of it, but then when I looked into the, the bag, I'm like, oh my god! I pulled it out, and Sarah was just like, holy! Yeah, shit, it looked it's, like it was about a pint worth. It's huge. Like it is. It my hand just fully fits around it does it say how many ounces like if, it is um it it probably um i will check real quick okay because the picture you sent me did look like it was like a small pint of ice cream so it definitely feels like that so my guess would be like between 12 and 16 ounces It says it's about, um, surprisingly, a little over eight ounces. Okay, but still, a whole cup it, of honey. Yeah, and it's like, it's really, it's wide. It's in a really big container, too, um, which I kind of, I guess, prefer versus, like, the tall, you know, like, the tall containers that are That honey is usually in. Yeah, um, just because then you can stack things on it, I guess, and the, the lid looks is pretty nice and you can scrape things out of it better than trying to squeeze that last bit oh, of honey like, out and then like when you're like sticking your knife in there and you gotta like you, your fingers get in there and they get coated in honey and you're just like oh god now i just feel gross exactly i i feel disgusting now 
Um, for those of you who have have just joined us, this is episode 28, I think, of the side table. Oh, shit. Sorry. I did. Thank you. Good call, Joshua. Welcome, everyone, to the <laughs> side table. Uh, thank you for listening and, and joining us for our, so far, a 10-minute conversation about marijuana. Patrick was marijuana. just so excited to get into it. He completely forgot to introduce himself. I am. Himself. I love, I love weed. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um, it's fantastic. And if you're able to use it, um, I would I would recommend it. Just at least one try. Whatever, any, however you want. Just but try sure, it once. But, but make sure if you're doing it, though, to try it with one, someone you know, and two, you're being dosed correctly. And then not to go out and, you know, operate and, motor vehicles. Yes. Uh, be, treat it. Like alcohol. Like alcohol. Because um, a lot of people, there's the whole stigma that, like, the war on drugs started against it. Um, the whole Reagan administration. So a lot of people have this negative context about weed, and it's not true. And people who shit on weed either, A, haven't smoked it and are just believing what they hear, which is so ignorant. And, <laughs> and the second thing is they either have had a bad experience with it because they were either with someone... Who just was like, oh yeah, just smoke this whole blunt, you'll feel fine. No, you're gonna have a fucking panic attack if you do that. Um, yeah, that that that's a pretty easy place to get yourself into. Oh yeah, or they didn't again do it with someone safe. Like if, like if you have a buddy who does it, like let's say Joshua wanted to do it. This is just again hypothetical. I'd be like, okay, if you want to do it, wait for me. We'll chill out. I'll correctly dose you because you're not used to it. Um. And then we'll just sit and chill and like watch Netflix or play a game if we're up to it. Look, if you want to Netflix know? and chill, just ask. Yeah, I know. I mean, well, this is all hypothetical for you. Right, I mean, right, this right. is what you would ask me. <laughs> yeah, this is what you would ask me. I'm just, I'm just there, you know. Just, uh, I'm supporting you. Uh, so yeah, just that, that. It's my final bit on on marijuana. Is uh, don't be, just don't be a snob about it. Um, that goes for other everything. Than that, Oh, that, that totally does go for for everything. Uh, just, like, shows, things. At least, like, I always keep to that. I don't know if you do it. Um, if you if someone says, hey, watch a show or whatever, I will watch the first episode or, like, the first two episodes of it, depending on um, the content of that and the story. Because I feel like if someone recommends something to you, or people are talking about all this, or you hear, you know, about whatever, um, and you give it a go, you should at least warrant it somewhat of your time, if that makes sense. It does. I'm not it, as good about that as you are. Um, if I'm in the mood to watch something, I'll be like, oh, what is so-and-so recommended to me recently? And, oh, and then, then I might kind of like go after it. Peruse your backlog? Exactly. I gotcha. Yeah, I just... Uh, um, I'm glad I moved because I've realized a lot of things. And one of the things is like giving people their moment mm -hmm. to shine or the time of your day res or respect. Yeah. Because I feel like for like, if you recommended something, you're very dear and close to me. So of course I'll take it seriously and give it a go. And same thing with like Sarah or like Ashley or my mom or, you know, um, people like that feel like, okay, like Ashley, for example, you can tell her this and she'll give me shit for it. Um, she told me to check out this Call of Cthulhu podcast, and I have binged the whole first season of it. <laughs> I am <laughs> I, on, I think, I'm the not last surprised. episode. Because usually, whenever Ashley recommends a podcast, not saying that podcasts are stupid. I enjoy podcasts, just not, like, narrative ones. And that's the majority of, of what she listens to, podcast Of which, yeah. Um, so I've, like, tried the ones she's recommended, but I just haven't gotten into it. But, like, this one, I, like, just binged all i think like there's 12 episodes in the first season oh wow yeah and i i think i'm on actually i think i'm halfway through the the 11th episode i believe but uh i was going to tell her i'm like oh yeah so i just like totally finished the first season and she'll be like i fucking knew it yep. yeah i knew it so 
Um, outside of that, Joshua, how have you been? How has your week been? You seem pretty uh, tired this week. Uh, a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm just I've I've been used to going to bed at like ten every night. So I got gotcha. you. No, I was just we a... were playing last night. It was like bedtime. Oh no, I meant like um, early in the week when we were like talking and stuff. I was just getting that vibe. I it, just it's like... just been a really really slow slow training week where I just have like hours that? of downtime. Okay. Could you uh could you repeat that? You cut out on my end. Oh, uh, sorry. No, yeah, I was just it, it's been kind of a slow slow week with training at work, so I've had hours of downtime at work. And uh, that so is just draining. And you're getting bored and antsy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, when that happens, I feel like that drains you more. It does. Because like your brain is trying to keep doing something, but your body's like I can't because I'm I'm here and it's just you know? pulling you the two ways and it's it's fatiguing i it's yeah half, for sure half the reason i left my last job is because i ended up just doing nothing for most of the day and i i actually want to work yeah right need something that's why to I keep like, me engaged yeah that's why i like my current job is well when you know prior to the uh to the whole quarantine uh because you were so busy throughout the day like it the day went by quick and you're like cool now i can go home you know do some do some and fun stuff yeah so no that was really nice so i was just curious how uh how it was going yeah it's been a solid week on monday though i i had this revelation the other night this is the Ooh. first time i will have a paid holiday in like three or four years how does that feel it feels amazing I, I too will. I found out yesterday I will have a paid holiday as well. Nice. But I uh, have had paid holidays before. You have not. So No, not well, not recently. Not for a while. Well, that's exciting. That's exciting that you get a three-day weekend to kind of chill. That is really nice. And then next week, I think we're back in like classroom training again. So it's a, we'll hopefully have maybe a little bit more engagement, but we'll see. Yeah. When are you almost done? Um, I know they were gonna. They were saying like six, eight weeks. Yeah. So it's two more. We're we just finished week four. We have two more weeks of classroom training. And then it sounds like that following week, week seven, um, we get certified to basically do our jobs, and then we're kind of on our own from there. Oh wow! Finally. Yeah, you're almost there. Almost. Well, that's pretty. I guess that's exciting. That's pretty exciting. It'll be just exciting from the point of view of, of getting work done and doing something with my day. And actually feeling like you have um, some sort of value, you know? I, right, instead of just sitting there. Uh, no, I totally uh, I totally get that. I, My job has been going... I think I'm, like, slowly out of the funk I was in, like, the past two weeks. Well, that's good. Where it was... Where it was just like the same thing over and over again. So I was feeling like pretty good this week. And then um, then I heard like Trump was coming into town. And that kind of just was like, uh, really? And then he didn't wear a ventilator. I mask. mean, ventilator. D didn't wear a mask at a ventilator company or wherever he went. He, he went town. to the, the Ford Motor Plant. Ford, Ford Motor Plant. Um, and then... Then he mentioned the comment about making uh, places of worship essential, and that kind of just made me mad. But then uh, we played uh, "Tales from the Loop," and it got a lot better. <laughs> but uh, that was a but good no, time. that was that was like the uh, one one down part of the week was just it was just Trump, and then that was just uh, uh, just annoying. But I don't know about you. I you you I think maybe more so than than myself now but recently i've i think it's just more because i'm i've becoming more independent and an adult uh especially like moving out of you know parents house and all that um the news in that that i'm hearing i'm taking more a lot more seriously mm -hmm. a lot more seriously i said that right yeah um so like it so when i hear like the governor like extending like the stay at home order or doing that um and then i hear people 
you know, combating it and like throwing a fit or whatever. I'm actually like in, feeling more in involved that. with what's going on. And I think that's because uh, I'm adulting more. I agree. I think Whereas, as you, yeah, you get a little older and you become more directly affected by the changes and the decisions that the people you vote in make. Uh-huh. You just, you, a lot of, a lot of teenagers and college students. And I know we both were like this where we would say, I'm not very political. Uh huh. Yep. And that's, I think just down to not, not being invested in it yet because you're not on your own. You're not making your yeah. own way. You're, these policies aren't necessarily directly affecting you. And as you get a little bit older, you become far more, far more invested in that process. Oh, for sure. And like this upcoming election, I, I think I'll be, uh, doing more research than the last one. The last one I just, you know, was not like, I don't want Trump to, so I just didn't vote for Trump obviously, but, Mm -hmm. uh, no, for sure. And like the, I remember when in college we would, if like certain things in the news came up and we would send articles to each other, it would just kind of be like a joker, like to laugh it off or whatever. But, uh, when I, <laughs> when I sent you the, the article last night about Trump opening the things for worship, the amount of time between me sending it and you replying was, okay, you read the article and then your immediate reply was like, he's such a dipshit. Like, like, <laughs> like you, like you read it, you took it seriously and then like you got mad and then you responded in like a, like appropriate response, not like in a joking sense of like, oh, like it's just fucking Trump being Trump. It's more like he's fucking like ruining us. <laughs> like it was, it was funny. The, the, the reply. The yeah, and it just made me that it just brought perspective, I guess, to uh, the whole thing. Yeah, because uh, I had literally just sat down for my break and I saw that text, and so so I quick read it, and I'm like, man, this guy is just <laughs> setting such a poor example and encouraging people who are either uneducated or ignorant to the facts of the situation, and it's it's a frustrating thing. It's it's really frustrating when people just don't take it seriously, uh, especially like like how he is, and then how I mentioned last night, uh, he's just uh, he's just he's just I I swear part of it is just doing it so he gets the votes to stay in office because he likes that seat of power too much. I I imagine the uh, the call for the reopening of the church is is largely just a yeah back backed by uh either him or people in his not necessarily cabinet but advisors who are saying hey if you want to hit these certain votes appeal to them this way right and it's just sad that this whole thing is just turning into like literally a political game i feel like that's what most uh decisions right now are government are made by yeah especially when it's something as serious as people dying of of a virus and you're going to twist that into making sure you can secure your your seat and power right and it yeah i know it's really sick it, it's upsetting um other news uh just real quick uh so did you have fun last night when we play? Did some role playing? Yeah, it was decent fun. Uh, role playing games always tire me out afterwards, but I st- I still enjoyed it. I I feel you there. I uh um oh I got on like a, a super high during it. Just like all oh, right, yeah, this is working. Everyone's kind of like I think it's just because we're all comfortable with each other. It definitely helps where Which you can easily the, uh, slide into I a think character it's and not always feel like a big self-conscious stone for um, those type of games. But uh, yeah, no, like you said, for people uh, like us, you more so, um, it's definitely draining afterwards to like be that social and be someone else, but. I think I think you killed it. I think you crushed it. I knew when I made that character, I'm like, he's gonna have so much fun because I wanted you to have fun during it. And I was like, okay, there's two ways I can make it fun, and that is make, you know, tactile combat, which I did, which we never got to, and uh, 
if he plays like this super religious guy where he can just like go ham and i'm, I'm glad you had fun no, yeah, yeah it was, it was nice. a it was a pretty a pretty uh fun character to kind of start out with not even um, just as a as a like a way to make fun of it but i have a backlog of knowledge on it yeah that was and another so thing it's is like doing research ahead of time for a role and but it's already there yeah it's super relatable so that's why i was trying to make it nice and easy for you but uh no like you real quick to clear something up um when you asked me if this was my rendition of the loop that i've been working on for a while did you mean like story wise or like mechanic, mechanic wise? wise mechanic wise yeah no it, okay I know that's you've been what working i thought on that for what like a year or more yeah no it, it's def it's that okay it, it's kind of it, it's both but yeah no it's that because i i realized after we were done talking that i uh misinterpreted the the, the question. question and re- yeah and replied um inaccurately and i uh i was thinking about that and i wanted to clear that up i meant to do that before we called but oh yeah. that's all right um but no cool i'm glad you had fun i'm assuming i was going to text ashley before we started if she had fun but i didn't want my phone to go off but i'm assuming she had lots of fun afterwards yeah she she enjoyed it okay awesome sarah had fun too she was able to paint her nails during it as well (laughs) so that was a plus and speaking of audio uh difficulties um because we had one prior to starting this recording um, well, and even now, I don't know if it's a an internet connection issue, but you are dropping out occasionally. On I, it's the same thing, yeah, same thing with you. So I don't know what it is. Um, is it? Are you using your laptop? Is it because I'm using my laptop and you and you're using uh, your desktop? Nope, I'm using uh, my laptop, but I've always used my laptop, so I'm not. Oh. Nothing's changed on my end. I don't know what it is then. Uh. What was I talking about? Um, you were talking about our technical difficulties last night with audio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just before. All because... So, sometimes Sarah likes to be real lax. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know. As I heard it, the setup was the way it was, so you didn't have to wear headphones. So, whenever the four of us game together... Um, Sarah uses her her PC, which has a microphone input for her headset. So when we set it up, I set it up because, again, I want everyone to have fun. That's why I did this stuff for you. That's why I wanted to sit next to Sarah with, like, this open mic so we didn't have to have headsets because I know that's what she wanted. Um, And then I knew Ashley would have fun regardless. So, like, I was setting up the audio how exactly how we have had it before and it wasn't working working because there was like back feed between (laughs) um the mics i'm like what is going on like like we were we had the mic plugged in like what if i like mute that you know i'm like what is going on and then it dawned on me i'm like sarah are you using the mic from your laptop or are you using it from your headset and she said oh probably like my my laptop and i'm just like this whole thing is because you didn't want to move like five feet. This this whole 30 minutes of stress well, that I'm having is because you didn't want to move five feet. It could have also been solved by the fact that the, the was she using her laptop at that point? She was using her laptop the whole time because okay. she didn't want to move. Yeah, and so her laptop only has the, the combo jack for the microphone headphone. Uh, her laptop doesn't have... Or does it not have any jack? It doesn't have any jack at all. It doesn't have any slot for a microphone. Or a headphone? It does for a headphone. I think it's a combo jack. Oh, so she needs like a... Uh, basically a, a splitter. Okay, so... I'm pretty sure Max do a combo jack where it will accept both. Gotcha. Um, so we'll know that for next time, but... No, that was... Uh... <laughs> so Joshua and Ashley got to sit on a lover's quarrel of... Sarah, just move five feet. No, I don't <laughs> want to. And I'm like, oh my God. And then it gets even better, everyone. So Sarah knew she was being a turd because when she, she's like, I'm just going to move to a different room. And I'm like, now you're just doing this to make me feel bad. And so while she's leaving to, to the room, she looks back and just starts laughing at me and smiling. And I'm like, 
you're a shit. <laughs> you're you're being a shit just to be a shit to me. And before uh, the uh, before we started, when I was I was in the call, but you guys couldn't hear me. Um, she admitted to being a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Patrick's like, well, oh I love God. you anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was just, oh man, whoo! It, it was, was funny. a funny moment. Yeah. Any anyway. Um, so today, everyone, after we just caught up, we wanted to, I wanted to do, I've been listening to a lot of music, um, during the quarantine. And so I, earlier this week, I asked Joshua if he would like to listen to an album and then we just kind of like talk about it just to see what it was like. And we, well, I decided on, um, Dookie by Green Day, which is, um, Green Day's big... I don't want to say biggest album. I didn't look that much into the history of it. I did watch a documentary about it, though. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way yeah. more into this than I did. Um, but the reason why I watched the documentary is, so I made the mistake of listening to Beyonce's Lemonade at the same time. I said, let's listen to Green Day's Dookie, because Beyonce's Lemonade is very, very good and. That's all I wanted to listen to this week. So on like Wednesday or Thursday, I was like, I haven't listened to this yet. And so I was listening to it in the background of whatever I did. So I wasn't like paying too much attention to it. So I wanted to kind of give it the attention it, it's due. So I listened to it again and watched a documentary about it. And I kind of want to listen to it again after watching the documentary because it kind of explained a lot. Um, so Dookie was Green Day's first big album like this is this album is what kind of put them on the the map of uh of breaking out of like the punk scene and into the more mainstream yep being internationally known uh that was it's basically it's like it was like nirvana's nevermind um for grunge this was punk's like answer to that and it came in 1994 it came out so it came out after I don't know so it basically was coming out at the same time that grunge was kind of going away a little fading bit. out yeah and uh, it, it was interesting watching the documentary because they were talking about you know it coming out of like the, the punk scene and I don't listen to a lot of punk uh, music so outside of like the clash and like the two albums of Green Day I've listened to now. Um, so if I get anything wrong, don't shoot me. Skewer him um, too badly. Yeah. But uh, again, this came out at the end of like the grunge era. So it was kind of like grunge and then punk kind of started. Uh, so again, Green Day kind of like blew up, I think in the same sense that Nirvana did. Um, and because of that, them becoming so mainstream the punk scene kind of uh, exiled them they didn't because the whole thing about being you know punk music is just making music that you want to to prove a point of uh you know either a being silly b wanting to say something you know it, punk was like it's it's uh, its own like specific form of expression um, outside of like rage and anger, which was kind of motivating grunge. And um, that is why like the punk scene exiled Green Days because they became so mainstream. And that's kind of what, you know, being a punk rocker is against is, against, is becoming mainstream. But a point that was brought up was like, Okay, Dookie's still an excellent punk album. Like, it is a punk album, but they use the man's money to make it. So what, you know, what's what better a way to stick it to them? Than to use their own money to make something, you know. So that's that. Um, and they mentioned that in, like, the documentary of, like, they wanted to... I mean, they wanted to make what they were making now, but, you know, bigger sound... They wanted it to sound better, better lyrics, just better, you know, just better, a better album. And they did. Um, what are your, what are your overall thoughts of it? I mean, how many times did you listen to it? I'm curious. 
uh, I, I only ended up listening to it twice uh, on my okay. on my way home, so I wasn't able to, you know, 100% pay attention to every little thing, because I'm, I'm driving, obviously. Yeah. I was playing Resident Evil 3 mostly <laughs> when I was listening to it. Um, but yeah, but looking at the, uh, the lyrics here, it's, you know, absolutely like the, the punky rock like, oh, yeah. feel and, and story in them. And it, it, I, I've, having listened through it, I've realized I, I have absolutely grown out of the, the punk rock appeal. The punk rock appeal? Yes. Um, so, so did it just like, I guess, was it the sound or the lyrics that you just were like, not connecting with i guess i'd say it's more at this this point it's more of the the lyrics that i don't connect with i got gotcha. and that they they do have like good good meaning and story behind them but it's a very it's a very depressing self-wallowing way of oh, going about it and that's that's just not something that I'm drawn to anymore as far as music. And I really, I really like green days, oh, sound, again. especially from the nineties. I, and so we listening back to this, it's even a little bit nostalgic in that. In that I, sense. Yeah. I may not have listened to all of these songs at one point, but they all have a very similar sound. Yeah. That was the first thing I noticed when, um, when I first started playing it and then it was like, you know, running through, um, outside of the, the popular ones that I have heard, right? I think there are like album. two or three on this album that I recognize the names and and sound from previously. Yeah, like one was I think it's I think it's Lakeview. Uh, Longview. Longview. Sorry, I don't remember that yeah. one. Um, and then but Basket Case, I remember. See, I don't remember Basket Case. And then When I Come I Around maybe... was a really popular one. Okay, when I come around, and I guess I'll have to listen to this again. But no, I listen, like I said, I listen to this in passing. And usually with albums, I kind of take a moment to listen to it. Like I usually, you know, throw on my headset and listen to it to kind of just think about what it's saying. I didn't, I don't think I did this album justice, to be honest with you. Especially after watching that documentary, it made me want to revisit it at least one more time. Just to kind of like, I guess, respect what was put into it. But compared to this album, have you listened to any other Green Day music? Yeah. Um, oh, man, I'd have to look look it up here. Because the one, the big one that I did, the, and it was like one of my big first like cool band albums that I listened to and that I got... I got it for Easter from my mother, was Green Day's American Idiot. I think that's the only other one of theirs that I've that I've listened to songs from actively. Which has like, you know, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, mm -hmm. Amer American Idiot, When September Ends. Um, I can't listen to Boulevard of Broken Dreams anymore, though. It's just like... It's just like, oh, here's this song again, you know, kind of. That's um, definitely one that's been been played to death. And, uh, but no, that, that was like the first, I, I have fond memories of that album because that was like the first album that my mother and I kind of connected on. Um, we both kind of got Green Day, you know, at that or whatever at, at that point. But thinking about that album though, and then thinking, comparing it to, to Dookie, first off, they originally wanted Dookie to be titled Liquid Dookie. <laughs> Uh, but they, but their um, producer, I think, probably said was like, it no, it won't sell as well if we do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, just a regular Dookie then. Um, yeah, but uh, Dookie compared to American Idiot, American Idiot, I feel like their songs sound different. Each each track is different. A lot to more so than it was in Dookie. Yeah, because Dookie just felt like it was like one long one long story like, or album in the same style one long, yeah one long diary read kind of if, if that makes sense yeah. like it's just like and i mean that's what an album is i guess but well some of them um, others aren't quite as connected 
That's true. That's very true. I uh, did you have like a favorite song off the album or a song you enjoyed? Not, not particularly. Um, like I said, I was listening to it mostly in passing, and aside from the few that I had recognized previously, nothing really, really jumped out and, and grabbed me. Oh, I remember Basket Case now. I just played a little bit of it. <laughs> yeah, I figured you would you would uh, recognize that when you heard it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Uh, not not much other than that. Nothing really jumped out in me aside from the few that I was familiar with before. What I did like about this album, though, is or what I respected more. I I think about this one is. Um, when this album came out, uh, Green Day, the, the musicians themselves, uh, were not, you know, like the glorified pop uh, stars or yeah. Or these big, like they, they weren't beautiful. Like, you know, they were good looking guys, but they weren't like fucking Bon Jovi, you know, or <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I I want your opinion on this because I think yours might be different than mine. Um, so do you do you like like the hair the hair bands of like the the eighties or like seventies? Like, do you still think you could jam and listen to that music? In in moderation. Um, yeah, a lot of the like eighties hairband rock and roll music i i got was some of the first music i really got into and mm-hmm. I, I i'm not a fan of listening through like a whole album of of bon jovi or what have you but being able to listen to some of the the real classic ones that you can kind of sing and jam along to I, i'll absolutely still listen to those i yeah i was just i would too i was just uh thinking that at the time when when like these you know, these hair metal bands. I mean, so, okay, first off, we'll start with, you know, okay, now, like, the popular stars now are, like, Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, you know. Is Justin Bieber individ- still a thing? Yeah, he recently came out with, like, a new album. Okay. Um, But, no, he's still a thing. Um, you know, it's like these, it, those kind of people are popular in music today. And... I kind of made the connection that like Bon Jovi, like these these glamoured, uh, glorified, like rock bands, like Bon Jovi, um, Sticks, you know, Def pe- Leppard, like, that yeah, things like that, or bands like that, that are just like we have to have like the biggest hair, we have to you know play as many guitars as we can at you know a given time, we have to do you know like. It was just about the show, which is what most music I feel like is now, <laughs> now like, like popular music, I should say. And that's like the equivalent of that. Like the hair rock is like the equivalent of that today. Like it, it's basically the same thing, you know, it's just like who can look prettier and look like they're really talented versus what's being put into the music. Does that make sense? Yeah, that make that makes sense to me. Um, I think, kind of the flip side though of being a band that you know is playing the most guitars or having the biggest show is that's sometimes what people want, especially when they're going to a live concert, is they want that oh. that entertainment high for for an hour or two. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. Because you have all I of just... those like big those big uh, like eighties bands that you're talking about and like going to a Guns N' Roses concert was, like, a big freaking deal. Yeah. No, for sure. It's just, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old, like, real fast. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, give me something with meaning, you know? Or what have you. I don't want to diss too much on Bon Jovi because I went through a whole Bon Jovi phase, so I have to respect it. Respect some part of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to respect it. I enjoyed it. It's just, it was just it was just interesting when that was brought up of 
Um, you know, the hair, like the hair rock and that is the popular stars of today is what, you know, hair rock was back in its day. It's just what it just looks wanted. a little bit different. Yeah. And I just thought that was interesting. Um, and I can definitely, how, sorry, go ahead. I was just, I, I was just going to say, I thought it was interesting how history repeats itself like that. It does. And I can, I can see the, the appeal of both, you know, what people want music and, and music with, with some sort of real meaning or passion behind it. Uh, yeah. Cause there's, yeah, no, sorry. No, there's just a, there's, there's a good place for both of them, even amongst the same, the same people. Right. And now, now that you mentioned that, I'm thinking like some people listen to music just for the artist. Like they want to just like they, like fans who listen to Justin Bieber. I don't know about his current music, but the Justin Bieber I know is people just love Justin Bieber. And they so they love listen to his, his music. Yeah. Um, or there's like, it's like wanting to be was, involved on a personal level with this person. Yeah, instead of just like listening to their music because you, I guess, connected with it. I, I, again, and this is, I'm just speaking as an outsider because I am not musically inclined in any way whatsoever. I, I like to dance a lot. I'm a good dancer. That's about it. Um, musically inclined, playing guitar, whatever. Not, never really, like, I'll be interested in it, but it never grips me, you know? It never, I never want to keep doing it. I, like, push myself to do it. Instead of but desiring to just spend to, hours. Yeah, and, like, I like the idea of, like, I could be that guy who just whips out a guitar, and then I realize, like, that guy's a fucking tool, and I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be that, you know? I mean, it's cool to, like, witness, or it's probably amazing to do, but... I'm just not a, I'm not about that life. Ain't I'm about, that about that flashy life. show off life. Yeah. So if you were to rate Dookie, Joshua, what would you rate Dookie on the um, awful, bad, no, it's bad, all right, good, great scale? Well, uh, in in trying not to let my my personal biases get in the way, I would I would give it a a good, a good rating. I think I would as well. I think there's a lot to it. I feel like, especially if you're younger and you find this album oh, and absolutely. listen to it, I think you would you would feel really really, really connected good to about, it. Yeah, I it hits it hits really well. Um, I think I I feel like I wish I would have listened to it when I was younger. I think like we would have given it a much better rating if we had. Oh yeah, this this album and if I um discovered grunge when I was younger instead of like just listening to Fall Out Boy and that or later Green Day, mm -hmm. I think I I think I would have um been a happier teenager maybe. I don't know. I'd like to think so. Or just had another way to express uh, your, any, your unhappiness. outside of that. Joshua, is there an album you would like to listen to next week? Sorry, what was that? If you're talking right now, I can't hear you're cutting out again. No, you're cutting out. I asked you to repeat yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is there an album that you want to listen to next week? There is not one that I have in mind. So if you want to do Lemonade, we can do I would that. Love to, I would love to do Beyonce's Lemonade. Okay. Uh, Lemonade, I would also highly recommend when you... <clears throat> I've been talking too much. My voice is cracking. Uh, when you listen to Lemonade, after you listen to it, Beyonce did a whole visual album for it. It's about like an hour long and it connects the whole story of Lemonade. Like it tells the story of it. I highly recommend watching it as like a, if you want to, you don't have to, but I highly recommend watching, uh, the Lemonade visual album, I think is what she calls it. All right. I'll, I'll listen to it and, and kind of judge from there. If It's uh, it was, it was pretty great. I, I really, really enjoy Lemonade. I hope you do. I'm trying not to hype it as much because I know what happens when I hype stuff up. But I really enjoyed it. So I hope <laughs> you uh, 
you enjoyed as well. Uh, outside of that, before we close, is there anything, Joshua, that you're doing this weekend that uh, for this uh, Memorial Day, or I guess your long extended day or weekend? Sorry, not too much. A uh, lot, lot of yard work. I'm gonna have to go and get a riding lawnmower here eventually because I'm tired of push mowing everything. I respect that. I think you already mentioned that. I, I've mentioned too. that so many times, and I'm just uh, a cheap bastard. Uh, no, I hey. I respect that too. Um, um, no, this this weekend we have to play some Elder Scrolls. Okay. Uh, we can. Yeah, you just you just tell me when. Um, I'm gonna try to finish out some mowing and yard work today, and hopefully be done with it for the week. Okay. You know, we or like we have to play some games just because uh, we haven't in a while because past couple weeks have been nuts. Yeah, I just. In terms of, yeah, everything being busy and developments and the state of the world. Oh, yeah. It's been nuts. But next week, if everything goes according to plan and nothing jaw-dropping in the world happens, I will be coming back to Big Rapids, Michigan. Um, Just for a visit, to clarify. Uh, Yeah, just for a visit. I'm not going to. No Patrick's like, you back. can't pay me to move back. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. I'm not moving back. I'll visit. I want to visit real bad because, one, I haven't seen you since December. Fucking December. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen my family since February. February. Uh, so I'm very excited. Um, unfortunately, I think Sarah has to work on Friday because, well, she doesn't have to. But since she's not working on Monday and it's not paid for her on Monday, mm-hmm. she, she doesn't want to skip out on a paycheck. Yeah, basically. Friday. <laughs> yeah so uh, I understand. She'll be getting back. Yeah, so she'll be getting back, and then she'll have to. Since she's dealing with like the general public, she'll have to. Oh, she, you have to like shower now and get ready. Like you have, it's a whole process now. Like getting groceries is a whole process. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but in the last couple days, the CDC made a statement that they don't believe it can be transferred very easily from uh, living on physical surfaces like you would get from your groceries. Oh, really? Yeah. um, It was just like two days ago. Um, They said it can live on there for a couple days, but the chance of transmission that way is extremely low. Oh, that's... Slightly reassuring. Yeah, that's slightly reassuring because huge germaphobe so i'm really i'm glad to hear that i will probably still for a little bit still clean everything off but uh, that's nice to know i'm hoping to get when we're in big rapids next weekend hoping to go to meyer and get things that our meyer has been out of forever ours has been Um, pretty good um i straight up have not been able to buy ramen in the last eight weeks which is disappointing oh really yep Uh, not a single thing on the shelf Toilet paper was actually a real a real hurdle in the last four weeks. Uh, I just was able to buy a container when I went yesterday. Uh, previous to that, do, I hadn't been able to find it in like four weeks. Wow. Do they... So is your Meyer dividing the toilet paper up into like packages of four rolls? No. And I think it's the only reason I've had an issue with that is because of the times I've been going. Because, like, I just bought a roll, a case, well, it's not really a case, but, like, 16 rolls of toilet paper in it. Oh, wow. Yeah, they've been, um, down here, they've been dividing it into a package's four rolls, and you can only get up to... The two or like whatever. One or, one or two. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we've just been... We don't get it if we don't need it, but last time we got... Uh, one package but the thing that they're out of is uh clorex wipes clorox wipes okay yeah you're disinfecting wipes able- yeah so we've been using uh spray bleach on spray bleach wow uh what is it called we'll just say disinfectant we'll just spray it onto a, a paper towel and mm-hmm. and yeah. use that that's the way to do it especially if you're using bleach you can just put a tablespoon in like a container of water and that'll disinfect just as well. And then just just kill everything. Yep. 
or you can just put it into your uh, veins and then you you know right into COVID's your body gone. yeah disinfectant boom genius the man who thought of that or said that genius should be with the light times oh, person of the year oh maybe top 100 i think i think he'd be top five sexiest man alive oh hmm, it's pushing it but maybe with that hair who knows anyway thank you all for listening to this episode of the side table this is episode whatever josh was said at the beginning 28 uh we are almost to 30 uh you can find us now on itunes uh i lied this is episode 29 is okay we're liars uh so but still it's on itunes trust me uh it's on spotify and i didn't double check google play but i'm assuming if itunes has put us on there by now google play has put us on there as well we can only hope so but thank you all for watching hope you have a wonderful day um if you're listening to this in the current climate of things stay inside and uh have fun i feel like i had to say like a last little catchphrase but i don't know um just you know start playing the music right here.